an old English poem from the Exeter book, Riddle 60. I was along the sand near the seawall beside the sea surge, dwelled firmly rooted in my original place. Few were any of the race of men that beheld my dwelling place in wilderness, for every dawn the dark sea surrounded me with its enveloping waves. Little did I expect that I, sooner or later, ever would speak mouthless over mead benches, exchange words. It is somewhat a wonder, complex in the mind, for him who cannot understand such, how the point of the knife and the right hand, man's intention and the blade, worked me with purpose, so that I would boldly disclose a verbal message for us two alone, so that other men will not know the meaning of our conversation far and wide. The Husband's Message by Anonymous First, I shall freely confide to you the tale of this tablet of wood. As a tree, I grew up on the coast of Massilde, close by the sea. Frequently, thence to foreign lands, I set forth and travel, the salt streams tried in the keel of the ship at a king's behest. Full oft on the bosom of a boat I have dwelt, fared over the foam a friend to sea, wherever my master on a mission sent me over the crest of the wave. I am come here to you on the deck of a ship, and in duty inquire how now in your heart you hold and cherish the love of my Lord. Loyalty unwavering, I affirm without fear, you will find in his heart. The maker of this message commands me to bid thee, O bracelet adorned one, to bring to thy mind and impress on thy heart the promises of love, that ye too in the old days often exchanged while at home in your halls. Unharmed you might still live in the land, love one another, dwell in the same country. He was driven by feud from the powerful people. He prays now, most earnestly, that you learn with delight. You may launch on the sea stream, when from the height of the hill you hear from afar the melancholy call of the cuckoo in the wood. Let not thereafter any living man prevent thy voyage or prevail against it. Seek now the shore, the sea muse home. Embark on the boat that bears thee south, where far over the foam thou shalt find thy lord, where lingers thy lover in longing and hope. In the width of the world, not a wish or desire more strongly stirs him, he instructs me to say, than the gracious God shall grant you to live ever after at ease together, to distribute treasures to retainers and friends, to give rings of gold. Of gilded cups and of proud possessions a plenty he has, and holds his home far hence with strangers. His fertile fields where follow him many high-spirited heroes, though here my liege lord, forced by the fates, took flight on a ship, and on the watery waves went forth alone to fare on the floodway. Fain would he escape, Stir up the sea streams. By strife thy lord hath won the fight against woe. No wishes will he have for horses or jewels or the joys of mead drinking, nor any earl's treasures on earth to be found. O gentle lord's daughter, if he have a joy in thee, as by solemn vows you have sworn to each other, I set as a sign S and R together, E, A, W, and D, as an oath to assure you that he stays for thee still and stands by his troth. And as long as he lives, it shall last unbroken, which often of old with oaths ye have pledged. The Wife's Lament by Anonymous Sorrowfully I sing my song of woe, my tale of trials. In truth, I may say, that the buffets I have borne since my birth in the world were never more than now, either new or old. Ever the evils of exile I endure. Long since went my lord from the land of his birth over the welling waves. Woeful at dawn I asked, Where lingers my lord? In what land does he dwell? Then I fared into far lands and faithfully sought him, a weary wanderer in want of comfort. His treacherous tribesmen contrived a plot, dark and dastardly, to drive us apart. The width of a world where with weary hearts we live in loneliness 
and longing consumes me. My master commanded me to make my home here. Alas, in this land, my loved ones are few, my faithful friends. Hence I feel great sorrow that the man well matched with me I have found to be sad in soul and sorrowful in mind, concealing his thoughts and thinking of murder, though blithe in his bearing. Oft we bound us by oath that the day of our death should draw us apart, nothing less and our love. Alas, all has changed. Now is as not, as if it never were, our faith and our friendship. Far and near I shall endure the hate of one dear to my heart. He condemned me to dwell in a darksome wood, under an oak tree in an earth cave dreary. Old is the earth hall. I am anxious with longing. Dim are the dales, dark the hills tower, bleak the tribe dwellings, with briars entangled, unblessed abodes. Here bitterly I have suffered the faring of my lord afar. Friends that are on earth, living in love, in lasting bliss, while wakeful at dawn, I wander alone under the oak tree, the earth cave near. Sadly, I sit there the summer long day, wearily weeping my woeful exile, my many miseries. Hence I may not ever cease my sorrowing, my sad bewailing, nor all the longings of my life of woe. Always may the young man be mournful of spirit, unhappy of heart, and have as his portion many sorrows of soul, unceasing breast cares, though now blithe of behavior. Unbearable likewise be his joys in the world, wide be his exile to far away folk lands, where my friend sits alone, a stranger under stone cliffs, by storm made hoary, a weary souled wanderer, by waters encompassed in his lonely lodging. My lover endures unmeasured mind care, he remembers too oft a happier home. To him is fate cruel, who lingers and longs for the loved one's return.